Hi, this is Ron. Welcome to Wheel in the Sky. Today, I've got a treat for you. I've got a Jim Ladd interview from 1978 from Greg Raleigh and Neil Sean. Wheel in the Sky! Hi, this is Ron with Wheel in the Sky. Today, I've got the Jim Ladd interview with Greg Raleigh and Neil Sean from 1978. This was originally and intended for radio audiences only. Today, I've cut some video together for it. I've, I've, there's not that many pictures of the guys in 1978, so I did what I could. You'll see a lot of the same pictures, but at least it's something for you to view while you listen to this great interview with Jim Ladd. It's great listening to these old interviews back when people could say anything they wanted to. This is Series 11, show number two with Greg Raleigh and Neil Shaw. This one took more time than I thought it would be to put together because of copyright issues. Uh, what they do in these interviews is they talk about a song and then they play the song. Well, I can't play the song, so I've got to cut around that and work it in another way. I've collected all these interviews from 1978 all the way to 1984. So for the next few months, I'll be playing these every once in a while. So hopefully what I can do is put one out every month or two and until they're finished. And then I'll move on to other radio shows because I've got a lot more than just Jim Lamb. Okay, here we go and enjoy the interview. This is Interview, an inside look at the people whose music has changed our lives. This portion of interview is brought to you by Kawasaki, the people responsible for bringing you a whole line of great bikes, a whole lot of good times, and even a little good time music we've made for you to enjoy throughout the show. Kawasaki lets the good sounds roll. We'll be back with host Jim Ladd and interview right after this. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to interview. I'm Jim Ladd. And tonight, we're gonna meet two members of Journey, Greg Raleigh and Neil Schoen. Both were to come up to my house on a great Southern California day to spend an hour or two in conversation for this show. And well, it sounded easy enough to me. First thing I need you guys to do, just for the purposes of the tape, because we have it transcribed on the papers, just say your name so they can connect the name with the voice when they type this. Every time we go to speak? No, no. Just the first is time. He, does he have to be on? <laughs> just the first time. Did he go past the red line? <laughs> I'm seeing him oh, now. Red line's He's all red. around me now. <laughs> God is a wild and crazy guy. <laughs> right. Uh, Neil, just uh, oh, you want check, to do check, that check. Now? Hey, hey, this is Neil. <laughs> Greg Raleigh, Neil Sean. Hey. Okay, now that now the transcriber will think we have three people here. <laughs> Okay. Excellent. And and Greg Raleigh. And Greg there's Raleigh. Four. Let's and forget. Sean. There's five in the band, so we're covered. <laughs> Sean. You want to go for middle names? <laughs> no. <laughs> Although during tonight's interview of Journey, I believe that you're going to find both Greg Raleigh and Neil Schoen quite open and ready to talk, Greg Raleigh did, in all fairness, ask me before we turned the tape recorder on if I could please do this interview without asking him a lot of questions about his former band, which, of course, was Santana. And, of course, I could very well understand his point of view, knowing that he'd been through that story countless times before. So... Now, see, the first thing that you, before we turn on the tape, that you, you ask if we talk about is Santana, right? Yeah, I absolutely want to hear all kinds of questions. Where is that air conditioning? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, are you implying that maybe this has been asked before? I mean... Uh, no, no, no we weren't, no. No, Who not at all. That? Who would do that? I mean, who wants to know? Do you think music is in a pretty good space nowadays as compared to uh, when you were playing with what's their name? Oh, Santuna? <laughs> Santuna. Uh, <laughs> I think it's getting back, man, to what it was. I, yeah, I think you might be right. It's, it feels kind of like it did. When we played in Amsterdam, the response is very much like Woodstock was. We went more. It we was great. More. I mean, it was crazy. They were standing out there in the mud. It had rained the night before or something. <laughs> and they were getting off to the music and, and the whole thing that was going on. The one I want to start with uh, is Wheel in the Sky. Who wrote that? I wrote the music. Yeah. 
Oh. And who wrote the words? Robert Fleischman wrote um, some of the words, uh, Diane, Valerie, and myself. And uh, what, what is the wheel in the sky? It's an imaginary wheel that's up there right now. Don't you see it? <laughs> just going around. Life keeps on going yeah, it's around. Just, it's, it's like uh, the wheel, uh, the earth keeps on turning. It's another way of a uh, word of... No matter what know. happens. Is, is there a specific uh, name other than that that you were using as an analogy? In other words, the wheel as someone or some force keeping this turning around? I didn't think about it. I'll tell you what. Um, when I thought of um, the line wheel in the sky, I, I just woke up one morning. I wasn't even thinking about it at all. I just had wrote some chords that go dun 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 dun. You know, so I wanted the wheel in the sky keeps on turning just because it rhymed with it. You know, it f sounded mm -hmm. right. You know, it's always embarrassing for me looking for cosmic consciousness in a song. A guy woke up out of a drunken state at three in the morning and went the wheel in the sky. <laughs> Not true. <laughs> no, I'm just spaced all the time. <laughs> oh, I'm a he cadet. sees those wheels all the time. They're <laughs> sitting all around him. It's real. All kinds of circles, <laughs> man. It's really out. Whew. Somebody want to watch Neil from now on during this thing. Oh, the wheel in the sky keeps on turning. I'm Jim Ladd, and our interview of Journey with Greg Raleigh and Neil Schoen will return right after this word. Money. Welcome back to our interview of Journey. On the first album, Journey was a five-member band. Greg Raleigh and Neil Schoen, our two guests for this evening, did keyboards and lead guitar respectively, and both of them sang. Ainsley Dunbar, formerly of the John Mayall Band, was on drums. Ross Valerie was on bass, piano, and vocals. And George Tinker was the rhythm guitar player. After the first album, however, they were a four-piece band when George Tinker left the group. And Journey remained four pieces for both their second and third albums. With the release of their fourth album, Infinity, Journey is once again made up of five musicians. With Ainsley Dunbar and Ross Valerie still original members of the band, Journey has now introduced a new lead vocalist, Steve Perry. He had been in a band, we were starting one here uh, in, in the L.A. area. He's from Fresno. And he'd given a tape to our manager. He had been trying to get in the band for, well, not trying real hard, but he asked once before, four years ago or something, when we, first when we weren't looking for a singer. And so we said, no, you know. I never really listened to anything that he had done. So at this late date, he came across with the tape, and he came out with us to be a vocal coach, uh, teach us harmonies and, and this and that, on the ELP tour we were doing. And so he did come on stage, so to speak, when that happened, and, and sang some songs that we had already written for this album, and he became a part of the band. It was about that simple. It wasn't so pre-planned as you might think, and it did kind of just appear that way. You guys have never been really light on vocals. I mean, you've always had really good vocals, but this guy does add a real nice quality to it. I mean, it fits he can, in very good. You know, when you can just sing, it's terrific. When we're playing, you're always using vocals kind of like an instrument to fill up all the holes and try and spread everything out, rather than uh, looking at at as a, a lead vocal standpoint. You know, because the album has become really vocal oriented. Let's talk about any time for a minute. Okay. Um, who wrote that? How did it come about? There was uh, five people involved, two of which are not in the band. Uh, or was it three? I don't know. I'd have to look it up. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's five people involved in it. Uh, I wrote uh, basically the music and the melody line, and Neil came up with the, the words. He you know, came he's sitting down in his house, and he's going, Ooh, nah. da, 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 And da, I go, da, what? Da. Oh, ooh. I said, okay, Ooh, we'll do it. Me, me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, and then he kind of nice. helped me and then, in the right direction. <laughs> <laughs> Took it from an X to a GP rating. Right? <laughs> yes. Well, really. What made you uh, decide on using It's All Too Much? But I thought that was such a great I liked it too. version I, of that tune. The way it happened is that I was playing that chord progression. Da, 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 da. Neil comes in. That's uh, George Harrison too. I went. Oh, right. and I always, I, I always thought I'd written song. something great. You know, I was going. No wonder it sounded so good. You know?
That song had always been one of my favorites because it wasn't out on the album Tennessee. until the Yellow Submarine was put out. So nobody realized it. But like I always heard that song as like the Who though. I heard it more, you know, raw or maybe like we did it a little bit. Does it bother you on any other level than paying the gas bill if an album does not go? No, I'll tell you, as, as far as this band is concerned from, from day one, every move that we've made has been a great progressive step, and never has there been a bad one. Every time we've gone on the road, whether we killed ourselves or not, made money, didn't have, certainly has been the premise here. However, we owe no, no one anything. We own all our own stuff, and that's more than I can say for most bands after four years. They owe half a million dollars easy. We don't. You know, the first album, we went out on the road, and it was a tough tour. I mean, tough just because it was, it was so bleak. FNL. Fear we and call loathing. it the Fear and Loathing tour. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And the second one, you know, got better, and everything is always going to... But n not only that, through, through that hard work, the band became tighter with each other. And so, like, it's ended up uh, very powerful. It's gotten real strong. This last tour has been, like, three and a half months, whatever, and a lot of hard work. And if the band wasn't together, and if we weren't a unit, and democratic processes weren't working, we wouldn't be here. But we are. Here I stand so Hi, this is Ron again. This is where we have to flip from side A to side B of the vinyl record. So bear with me, and here comes side two. So la da is there a lot of day? Mm -hmm. Let's go to that one. That's about nuclear physics, right? <laughs> <laughs> A, mm -hmm. a simple, quiet love song. That's one for Ted Nugent and everybody that likes his stuff. That is a rock and roll tune. That's what we yeah, opened we opened the set, set with that oh, one. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, is it La Du Da or La Du Day? It's La Du Day, actually. Did you, know, did you notice the, uh, I mean, there, there's little marks that you supposed to learn Nobody in second grade. Do you, that, know that? do you know that? I know, it's ridiculous. That's Never one wrong. of the reasons yeah. that they don't play the song on the radio. This radio disc jockey told me that the other night. He didn't know what the name of it was. And he, I guess he was fine. Start attacking the craft, you know what I mean? Do you remember that in the dictionary where it has these lines? I mean, accent marks, all those things? Well, we put them on there so that the law is the short sign over it, and the day has the lo long vowel sign. <sighs> That's why it's there. <laughs> I tell you, Greg, next time, why don't you just ship a little Webster's Pocket Dictionary? <laughs> you know, an explanation. OK, it's a deal, man. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be sure to send it to all radio stations. Uh, OK, now, <laughs> now let's get right down. What, what is it with radio stations? You guys got to uh, so no. Oh, hey, of course hey, not. We, we love, love them. them all, right? We love them all. Hey. What why is do you it say that? I like <laughs> anybody that plays on music. <laughs> is that it? Yeah, basically. <laughs> Just, there's nothing really, uh, there's no heavy lyrics behind it, I don't think. It's just something about you, baby, you know, you really wank me off, you know? <laughs> oh, God. Something like that. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not really like that. I don't You're know. You're going to get at least five minutes of you put it It's all right, as long as it ain't television, they can't see what he did. You know, the public are into vocals. They like them. First instrument that was ever out, you know, and uh, they want to hear them. We want to do both. And uh, we've already done the other, and we decided to go this way and you know, get a lead singer. I mean, it was inevitable that we would do it. It was time to, to make that change. We weren't looking before at all. Herbie, our manager, just came in and said, hey, you guys want to try and get a lead singer? And we said, well, OK. Yeah, it was, it was that, that simple. But even before that, we had decided to take this musical change uh, for the next album, the Infinity album. But musical change by getting another singer or getting a little harder or more accessible? You no, know, more accessible is a good word for it. Uh, you're playing for a public as well as you're playing for yourself. Otherwise, you, you might as well sit in the garage and play with yourself completely. Like Neil does. <laughs> <laughs> Right, oh, Lodi Day. Oh, my God. <laughs> You'll never live that one now, eh? Oh, um, 
is it hard to say to yourself, okay, you know, I mean, we're, we're here to play what comes out of us and, and what we want to play, yet we have to keep the accessibility. Where do you, I how do you draw that line? I don't find it hard at all. I'm completely pleased with what we're doing, and I was glad that the change was made. It's just another added dimension to the music. It's, it is still an instrument, as far as I'm concerned. Vocalizing is an instrument. It's just now that has become a little more predominant, which is a great change. I just set my both. craziness aside for a while, you know, it can wait. We do it on what do you stage. Mean by that? To create Playing well, needs a lot of solos. And yeah, solo just, work. you know, I got tripped out ideas about music myself, you know. Um, and most of them are so advanced that nobody would understand them. <laughs> or just, you know, progressive, spacey, you know, just no format, you know, really just play with some people that can play to see what you come up with. Look into the We'll return with the conclusion of tonight's interview of Journey. But before we take a break, we have to stop here for a little microphone trouble and an embarrassing moment for interview's producer, Bill Levy. Get your hands off me. <laughs> <laughs> These are cute microphones you have. <laughs> Bill's reputation is ruined forever. He'll never work for anybody else again in his life. <laughs> you think um, the intent of people that you meet in music, it's obvious that with you guys it is, is still pretty much from a musical standpoint or has it turned into more I'm gonna be a rock and roller for the bucks? I really don't know. I would never ask anyone so I would never know. I mean, uh, I would assume that anyone that goes on the road Look, and has to work that hard, they must love what they're doing and it can't be the money because you just don't make any at first. You uh, really live off peanut butter, I'm telling you. Yeah. My guess would be that I, I think they must love it. When the lights what were you saying? Well, I was going to say that uh, you portray somebody on stage, right? But that doesn't mean that you live the life of that person every day of your life or when, you're, when you sit down to write a song. It doesn't mean that I'm going to, you know, sit down because I want to be a rock and roll star and uh, live for the box. Yeah, he doesn't. I look at it sort of like, uh, okay, Sly, Sly Stallone plays Rocky, you know. Okay, he pulls it off and he gets what he deserves. Yeah, but isn't being a musician a bit different than being an actor? Yeah. I mean, Totally different. But do you consider yourself someone who goes and creates a character on stage that's different than you are here? Well, it's animated to a certain degree. Sure. It's the same person, but the animation has become, you know, you're out, you are to entertain people, and a lot of times if you're just playing, it's not enough. It's the difference between standing still all night and playing exactly the same thing, or still feeling the same thing, and throwing one arm up at one section just so the audience can go, I see, man. I hear it now. You know, it's like Cause I can it's to help it. them understand. Really, it's not to be a phony. We have some effects, but it's not an effects band. I wouldn't say. Right, right. Okay. It's more of an entertainment schedule than anything else. And uh, when that when that stuff was going on, we, that's when we were doing the opposite. Because I was not into that. I didn't want. And I think the growth pattern of the band has become more of an entertainer situation. Still playing the same thing, but but show it. Then there's also the time that you're just having such a good time that you get so into the music that you don't even have to think about animating. You're just yeah, doing it. That's mm -hmm. true. You know, and then that leaves with when, when that happens for real. You um, w what is left behind is what you did, and then you're thinking about it too. You know, all the time too. That's the most exciting from an audience standpoint is when they get the the idea that whatever's ever's happening up there is because the musicians were carried away as much as the audience. I'll tell you, in the situation with this band, the reason why most of the things we do now are happening and we keep, keep them is because they did happen just that way. So we just try and do it again. It's like being consistent playing the same song every night, you know? We just try to be consistent with the whole show. Or writing, uh, writing the music that we do, it, it's not something where you've usually, sometimes you have to sit down and really try to apply yourself. But usually it is just something that comes out. And doing a solo, uh, it's, the solo is not, you could call it worked out because you learn it afterwards, but it is something that just comes out. It's something that came out one night that you want to keep because somebody said, hey, that was great. I see. So you keep it. So it's like a combination of these things that yeah. have built up over that. So I mean, why does Peter not Townsend jump up and down on the stage all day long, you know, at show after show. 
Me, I'm made... asking the questions here. You know what I mean? You <laughs> <laughs> gotta keep it in mind. Well, he made... What do I know from Peter Townsend? I never met. Yeah, that. he may not. I mean, uh, he. I'm sure he doesn't feel that every time, but he did <laughs> at one time, and yeah. that's why it, and it became a trademark. True. Uh, do you think that's the limo guy that's sitting down there? Uh, made a promise to this guy that at 345 or something, do you know what you have to do? Yeah, we, gotta, we, we really gotta get back. That we have to get back at four, for sure. Is there anything here that we should get into specifically before you go? Yeah, we want to play music for the 80s and the 90s. Someone else. They can look forward to lots of other good albums coming out of us, for sure. We've just started. Someone asked, uh, asked me the other day, what do you want to do in the future? And what, you know, what are the plans for Journey? And I suppose the only thing I could say is to continue and just never stop. Great. Well, I thank you guys both for coming up here. You really got good sense of humor. Thank you. It was you. a nice way to spend the day, man. <laughs> All right. Great. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Thanks a lot. You can do what you want to. Before I say goodnight, I'd like to say thanks to both Paul Rappaport and Mike Jensen from Columbia Records for arranging this conversation. My personal thanks go to my partner Jack Morris and to Interviews, Robbie Carroll and Lindsey Guerrero. I hope you hear us next week, same time, same frequency, for Interview. I'm Jim Land. This has been another Interview, brought to you by Kawasaki, the people responsible for bringing you a whole line of great bikes, a whole lot of good times, and even some good time music you've heard throughout the show. Kawasaki lets the good sounds roll. Interview is written by Jim Ladd, produced and engineered by Bill Levy at Filmway's Hyder Recording Studios in Hollywood. Interview, another new concept in radio. Well, okay, thank you. I hope you've enjoyed the interview. This is the first time I've put one together in all its entirety. And that's what I'll be doing from now on. Hope to see you next month or in the next month or two with 1979 Jim Ladd interview of Neil Sean and Greg Raleigh. All right, have a nice day. Thank you for watching. Please hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.